Hello class, this is our final video for Math 418 uh, for this semester. So I'm going to talk about just one other um, continuous stochastic model just so you can get a feel for kind of some of the differences and the other different things that can kind of come up in building a model like this um, and go through it. And this is a model of what's called a pure birth process. So this is kind of the first step in setting up a population model with a continuous stochastic model. Um, and so you can think of this as being kind of the population version of our model where people arrived in the queue but never left. So that's why it's called a pure birth process. So it's a population model where people are born but they never die. Um, so of course not very realistic, but you can expand on this and build up a full continuous stochastic model of population by adding in the other arrows going the other way. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to think about this as being very similar to a Q. So if you think about a population model, um, if you have a population, what we're going to do is we're going to take delta T to be small enough that only one um, individual is born in each delta t time interval. Okay, so the same assumption that we made last time. Okay, um, and what we're going to say is that each individual has probability say um, we're going to use b as our variable, b delta t of giving birth in that interval. Okay? So this is really the difference between um, a Q and a population model. So if you think about it, the more individuals you have in your population, the larger the probability that they give birth is going to get. So not only does our, um, our probability here doesn't just, isn't the same for all the different states. It's going to change based on each state. So if you think about this in the same way as our Q model, uh, well, there's not a zero state, because if there's zero in the population, it doesn't go anywhere. So if there's one in the population, two in the population, three in the population, now, mind you, um, if there's one in the population, you might say, well, then there's not going to be any birth rate. Um, we can think about this as being either something that is um, uh, asexual, that only has one gender and every, every can reproduce, or we can think about it as being these are just the reproductive members of the population, either way. Um, and so the actual population would be twice that because you'd have reproductive and non-reproductive, but... Um, Regardless of how we think about it, um, we're going to think about these as each being capable of giving birth. Um, and so we've got probability B delta T of going from um, a situation where there's one member of the population to a situation where there's two members of the population. Okay? So that's the probability that that individual gives birth. But if we've got two members in the population, our probability of going to three is going to be two times b delta t. And the probability of going from 3 to 4 is going to be 3 times b delta t. So this population increases because each individual has a probability b delta t of giving birth in that time period. Um, and so it increases as we go along. Okay? So you can see how this would kind of, um, it builds up um, and it keeps going, of course, as we go along. Um, and then, of course, we also have the possibility, uh, the rest of our Markov chain, so we've got a 1 minus B delta T probability we stay in state 1, a 2 minus B delta T probability we stay in state 2, or I'm sorry, 1 minus 2 B delta T, that makes more sense, 3, uh, 1 minus 3 B delta T, 1 minus 4 B delta T, 
and so on and so forth. Okay? And so this model, this is a model for this population that gives birth, uh, different than our Q model, right? Similar kind of idea, um, but slightly different. Okay? So from this, you can set up a matrix equation uh, just like we did before. You get the same kind of situation. So you're going to have P sub 1 of T plus delta T, so the probability that there's one person in the population, P sub 2 of T plus delta T, P sub 3 of T plus delta T, and so on and so forth. And that's going to be equal to P sub 1 is just going to be 1 minus um, B sub delta T times P sub 1 of T, right? Because the only possibility would be that there's one member in the population and they don't give birth. So 1 minus B delta T times P sub 1 of T. Uh, P sub 2 is going to be B delta T times um, P sub 1 of T, and then 1 minus 2 B delta T times P sub 2 of T, and so on and so forth, and we can keep um, building this up in the same way that we built it up with the Q model. Okay, so same idea except now we've got this pop, um, probability that's increasing, okay? And so from this, you can write out equations. Um, again, the first one looks very similar to what we had before. You get P sub 1 of T plus delta T equals uh, 1 minus B delta T P sub 1 of T. Right? Um, and then for the higher ones, P sub N of T plus delta T is going to be equal to uh, N minus 1 B delta T times P sub N minus 1 of T. So N minus 1 B delta T times the previous value. So for example, for P sub 3, we're going to have 2B delta T times P2 of T plus 1 minus N B delta T times P sub N of T, right? And so those give you your difference equations. We can manipulate those around, and we can write out um, differential equations from them. So P sub 1 prime of T is going to be B times P sub 1 of T. So that's a very simple exponential equation. We've seen that differential equation before. Um, for the higher level ones, it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, P sub N prime of T is going to be equal to, let me look at the book, N minus 1 times B uh, P sub N minus 1 of T. Plus N, or I'm sorry, minus N times B times P sub N of T. Okay, so N minus 1 B times P sub N minus 1 of T minus N times B times P sub N of T gives us our differential equation. These can be solved. Um, so you can actually write down they're not quite as bad as um, the differential equations that we were looking at before. So of course the first one, P sub 1 of T, um, just has a simple exponential solution. So if P sub 1 prime of T is B times P sub 1 of T, So P sub 1 of T is going to be uh, E to the negative 
right? That's a yep. This should be negative b e to the negative b t. So you've got that exponential function. You're less likely to have a population of one. It declines very rapidly. Uh, for the higher level ones, you can solve this out. It's a little bit more complicated, but it's still definitely doable. P sub n of t is equal to n minus 1, choose, uh, I'm sorry, n minus 1, reading the wrong spot, uh, it's going to be equal to e to the negative bt times 1 minus e to the negative bt to the n minus uh, 1. For all n greater than 1. Okay, so you can solve this um, and get this that that's the population probability. And so what this is, this is the probability that there's one member in the population and that declines very rapidly. This is the probability that there are n members in the population. Um, and so you can look at a graph of something like this and see that it kind of has spikes. After a certain amount of time, you're more likely to have this many members in the population. After a certain amount of time, you're more likely to have this many members in the population and so on and so forth, okay? And so in the next video, I'll show you how to build a simulation of this, um, uh, this model, this pure birth process, uh, and that's what we'll finish up with for the semester.